Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about time series analysis. What is time series analysis? Time series analysis is nothing but the data which is given in a set of order based on time. You can see the data set here. The computer sold on a weekly basis, okay, which is given on a weekly basis. It is a time series data. If you give it in a monthly basis, that is also called time series data. And if you give any data which is in a yearly basis, that is also a time series data. For example, GDP data, uh, we have uh, oil price data or say stock price data of last one week or last one month. So these all comes under time series data set. Okay. Now, what are the three major aspects of time series? When we deal with time series, as an analyst, we have to uh, take care of these three things. The first thing is stationarity. The second thing is called seasonality. And the third aspect is called autocorrelation. Now, what is stationarity? Stationarity is nothing but when you plot the time series graph, okay, in x axis you have time, and in y axis you have whatever the variable. For example, in our previous, in this example, we say the week will be drawn in the x axis okay the week the week will be drawn in the x axis okay the week week data will be in x axis and unit sold y y axis and then whatever the data points you get you can plot there so that is what it is now what do you mean by stationarity stationarity is nothing but you have a constant mean constant variance and also you have a covariance which is independent of time a flat looking surface a flat looking surface which doesn't have any trend or which doesn't have any uh, any fluctuations okay uh, to better understand this we have to look at this graph you can see here the time the mean of time series should not be a function of time that is nothing but you can see this green graph here when you plot it is the mean is constant when you take when you take randomly the point p, period p1 and p2 and when you calculate the average the average will be same whereas in non stationary series there will be a trend for example p1 value of p1 and p2 will not be the same if you randomly select two periods of means that is p1 period 1 say 19 some 1980s to 1990 and then 2010 to 2000 20 okay two different periods if you take and if you take the average of whatever the data we are dealing with it should not increase or decrease it should be constant that is called stationary if it is not constant if it is decreasing or increasing that is called non stationarity so what do you mean by constant variance constant variance is nothing but there will be a varying plot when you plot the time series you can see this red line which is varying it is not constant so that is called non stationary data so in order to have the stationary data the mean as well as the variance should be constant that is the condition of stationary data and what do you mean by constant variance variance you can see in this green graph the variance of this spread you can see the spread it should be same it will be in equal in practical case it will not be possible but that is the condition of stationary series whereas you can see here in the red line series here you can see this graph there is a space and then there is no uh, spread it's they are very close here so this kind of spread it is actually the covariance the covariance is not same here so that is why it is called non stationary so the non-stationary and stationary these are the differences so that is the first part of our time series uh, first aspect of our time series analysis okay you can see a few more examples here this will come under stationary data series here there is a upward trend here there is a fluctuation again and then here you can see there is a, in between there is a lot of uh, uh, high frequencies then again it becomes normal and here you, you can see there is a 
starting it is low and then it's going on increasing it's going on variance is more then here initially the variance is high then there is uh, zero variance then again there is increasing variance so these all come under non-stationary except this one now the second condition of time series the aspect of time series will deal with the seasonality what do you understand by seasonality seasonality is nothing but you can see uh, there will be a high sales of uh, cinema tickets the weekend and you can see this a common uh, common uh, scenario in western uh, USA and other western cultures that they have a high uh, sales during the Christmas time in India we have different pattern in India the graph may go different during Diwali and during Chakranti etc but in USA the mostly yearly pattern it has been observed that each fourth quarter there will be a high increase in number of sales for any business because it's a Christmas time it's a holiday time obviously all the expenditures spendings of people goes very high so sales obviously goes high so that is that type of pattern is called seasonality okay and uh, when we are dealing with time series we have to take care of seasonality as well and the third part is auto correlation in time series data there is a high chance that uh, the variable which you are uh, trying to forecast will have uh, auto correlation among the values of itself for example you can see here uh, the y values okay these are the y values and when you take a lag of this one okay you can transform these values here just uh, remove the first one and then take the and then start correlating this first observation towards this one you calculate the correlation you will have, you will find out the value of 0.64 when you do the correlation among the lag of y and the lag of y y on lag of y like this it is shown here right if you take correlation of these two if you take correlation of these two the value is 0.64 which shows there is a high correlation okay so the, that data among itself should not have high correlation you can see here in the slide r2 part of auto correlation is a greek word which means data is correlated with itself the data should not have correlation with itself that is called auto correlation okay the example is sh shown here in this table and you can see the column to the right shows the eight of these values moved up if you just take these values here you take these values okay these values and copy and paste here and if you perform correlation if you perform correlation among them if you perform correlation among them the value you are getting is around 64.64 which is like 60 percent which means there is a high correlation okay so when you get a value of 0.64 that means the data is highly correlated with itself that is called auto correlation so auto correlation should not be there these three condition uh, i'll just go through a recap again in order to analyze the time series data it should not have non-stationary data the data should be stationary okay and there should not be any seasonality you have to take care of seasonality pattern and you have to take care of auto correlation as well when forecasting in time series now let us we have uh, last semester uh, we have dealt with uh, i mean we have gone through the syllabus of production operations where we saw uh, what is mean by uh, moving average what is meant by exponential smoothing etc those are all the other uh, simple forecasting techniques these are the arima and arma are little advanced version of uh, forecasting uh, arma and arima the understanding of this one is now arma arima modeling we saw the time series uh, three aspects of time series now we have to know what is mean by arma and arima the actual name of arma is r2 regressive 
moving average and arima is nothing but that extension of this form this uh, arma i'll explain you what is mean by auto regressive moving average and integration arma method is used for forecasting okay what auto regression does is it use it uses the same variables data set lag of these variables data set to perform regression okay example the meaning of uh, this auto regression is the the lag values the lag values of itself it takes as independent uh, to better understand that we can come here this table will make you understand better you can see here the data of year wise given this is the salary of uh, assistant professors in tamil nadu okay so what we have done is we have taken the lag of these data the first lag we just take the lag of this one second lag we take the lag like this then the third lag we take like this now what we have to do is we have to remove the top 3 and then from here we have to perform regression by considering this as your in, uh, dependent variable and this as your independent variable 1 independent variable 2 independent variable 3 okay that is how it is performed that is called auto regression now this is uh, obviously you can see here it works on the principle of let the variable speak for itself so in arma arima we have uh, three parameters which are de denoted as p q d p is nothing but auto regressive q means nothing but the moving average and d is nothing but the differencing i'll explain you what is that arima means ar means auto regression which is denoted as p i is nothing but when you go for a differencing degree of differencing it is denoted as t and moving average is denoted as q okay in arma model you all know this uh, regression equation right y is equal to a plus bx here what happens in ar model is it is a univariate analysis okay it means there is only one variable for example here there is only you have a data of time series data of gdp okay you perform regression with the lag of that one t minus 1 is nothing but lag of that one right that is what we saw so it is denoted as a plus b y t minus 1 plus error there will be a error term this is like error you know for performing regression you have the error value that is how it is and the equations further will develop like this where y is a dependent variable gdp and uh, you take lag of that one as iv1 so that is how it goes now what is mean by moving average in this time series this moving average is not the one which you studied in the last semester like smoothening one it is not like that it is it represents the error of the model okay you know in regression after performing the regression we have this residual that is that is what here in auto regression we take uh, y towards y t minus 1 the lag of y here we have to take the lag of errors okay here we have to take the lag of errors here uh, in auto regression we take lag of the variable dependent variable y here we take the lag of lag values of error values residuals okay so if you are confused with the mathematics things you need not worry because if you understand the regression equation that will make you clear okay so this is how it will be represented in data okay moving average will have a constant plus uh, error term okay then uh, when you do the first moving average then you will get uh, theta 1 t minus 1 lag of 1 then this is lag of error 2 okay 
when we write combinedly AR and MA equation, it will look somewhat like this. When you have one lag of AR, okay, one lag of MA, you can write it as GDP T minus one theta one E T minus one plus the error term, common error term, okay. And if you take uh, two lag of AR and two lag of MA, then the equation will look like this. Anyway, software is there to help us for the equation. We just need to know what is the concept behind it. Now, when you deal with the data, you always, uh, sometimes the, most of the data will be uh, non-stationary. Okay. In order to perform uh, ARMA and ARIMA modeling, whatever the data, you have to convert that data into stationary before forecasting. So the moment you go for the difference, I mean, the moment you go for converting the non-stationary data into stationary data, you are moving towards ARIMA modeling. Before that, if you are not using any difference directly or applying the ARMA model without any uh, conversion of uh, data, stationary data to non-stationary data, then it is ARMA. When the given data set is not stationary, you have to go for a differencing method that is denoted as T. Difference is done to convert the non-stationary data into stationary by differencing the previous observation minus current observation. You can see here these are the values. Example, for example, these are the values. Okay, these are the values, and leave the first one. You have to minus four minus five. You have to do then six minus four, seven minus six. 9 minus 7, 12 minus 9 and 12 minus 12 will give you a different plot. The, the graph will change here. Okay, the moment you do the differencing, the non-stationary data, the non-stationary data will become stationary data like this after differencing. So that is why in order to convert the data, non-stationary data into stationary, we do differencing. Okay. Yes. Yes. You know, uh, in broader terms, total arima means AR means auto regression, which is denoted as P. I is nothing but when you go for a differencing degree of differencing, it is denoted as T, and moving average is denoted as Q. And what are the applications of arma and arima model? Mostly these are used by investors, stock people, policy makers, stakeholders to have information about companies forecasting. Okay, a lot of companies like uh, uh, KPMG, uh, Goldman Sachs, Ian Bai, these all are forecasting firms. Uh, they use this uh, data set, uh, these companies data set to perform the forecasting. Mostly the GDP, oil price, and we have this uh, inflation rate extra based on the time series stock price everything is done using uh, this arma arima modeling 